Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be setting up a data merge in Adobe InDesign with the end goal to create individual PDFs that are named by the data in our data template. So I have a example today of a two page flyer for a grocery store chain. So you can see on the front, I have some variable data that I already have set up. And then on the back, I have a just a, a static back page. So the goal is that we need to go ahead and we need to create flyers for all of the 50 locations that we have spread out across all the different states in the country. So in my data file here that I've set up in Google Sheets, you can see here I have the name of the state for all 50 states. I have a phony phone number here. And then I have some made up prices for the three individual items that we have on our flyer. The most important part though, is the last column of data here that shows our quantity that we need to print for each individual location. So in this case, we need to print hundred of these flyers for Alabama, 50 for Alaska, a thousand for Arizona, et cetera, et cetera. The problem with using InDesign's data merge is that when you export to a PDF, it's just going to give you one large file. So in this case, since we have a two page flyer, 50 locations, we're going to end up with a 100 page PDF file. The problem when we send that to print is even if you have a list that you provide to your print service provider, it's up to the person to either check it off of this list that you give them or they have to go one by one there's always a little bit of room for error, right? So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to set the name of the file for each individual PDF as this quantity and the state name. So I'll show you how to do that. First, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna download our CSV file here. I'll go ahead and I'll drop it into the folder that I'm working on and I'll go back into InDesign and I'm gonna to go to my data merge and I'm gonna update my data source. And you can see I already have my CSV file linked. So if I click my preview here, you can see this location is changing in this, uh, in this spot here, this spot down here, the phone number changes and then these prices change based on the information from our data source. So now what we need to do is we need to create it in a way that we can go ahead and we can utilize the information from our data source for the file name. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my layers. And I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'll just call this file name. I'll go back to my data merge here. I'm going to create a brand new text box and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select quantity. I'll put an underscore and then I'll put state and I'll just go ahead and just kind of move this up into the corner. You can see here if I click preview, this is 100 for Alabama, 50 for Alaska, 1000 for Arizona, et cetera, et cetera, right? So obviously we don't want to print this, um, but first we need to do one other thing. We need to go to paragraph styles and we're going to create a brand new paragraph style. Make sure that nothing is selected and I'm going to go ahead and click the little plus button down there and I'll go ahead and call this uh, new paragraph style um, file name as well. So I'll click OK. I'm going to highlight that text that we just created and I'm going to apply that paragraph style to it. doesn't matter how it looks um, because it's not even going to be visible. So from here, we, like I said, we don't actually want that to show up when we print that. So we want to go back to our layers uh, area here. and We're going to right click on that file name layer and we're going to click on layer options and we want to make sure to uncheck the print layer here and I'll click OK. So now essentially what that is doing is it still exists in our InDesign file, but the, the actual layer is just hidden more or less. Um, when we go to print or if we export, it basically will not export that layer. So now we're ready to go ahead and go back to data merge and we're going to run our merge. I'll just, uh, I'm going to do all records. This is not going to be uh, multiple records. It's going to be a single record. I'll click OK. After a second here, it'll finish up. It'll tell me, great, no overset text was generated. And then you can see here, I have a new file, dash one, that's the default that InDesign always does for um, data merge. And then if I go down here and look, I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a total of 100 pages. 
And if I just kind of scroll through here, you can see I have 100 Alabama, there's Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, et cetera, et cetera, right? If I click my W key, you can see that information disappears. The W key is for my preview, so this is how it's gonna print, and obviously that's not gonna print because our layer is still hidden. So now what we need to do is we need to create a bookmark for each one of those individual uh, boxes that we created, text, text boxes that we created in the previous step. So the way to do that is to come up to layout and go to table of contents. So it doesn't matter what the pair, the uh, style you pick, you can just pick the, the you know table of contents, title style, doesn't really matter. We're going to remove this basic paragraph style from the left here and we want to use our file name paragraph. And this is where it's going to look and find each one of these in our InDesign document and create a bookmark for that individual page. The most important thing here is to make sure that create PDF bookmark checkbox is actually checked. So I'll click OK. You don't have to touch any of the other settings here and I'll just draw this table of contents out in the margin somewhere. It doesn't need to even be on any part of the, the actual pasteboard. So this is ready to go now. I'm going to go up to File, Export. And I'll just save this as a, a grocery store flyer. I'll hit save. I'm going to use my press qual uh, quality preset here. Uh, I'm going to make sure on my marks and bleeds, I use my bleed settings. And under general, you need to make sure that the bookmark tab is selected. If you don't have this, then it won't create the bookmark for you and the next step won't work. So I'll go, go ahead and click export. I'm going to go to my background task here to, so uh, I can see that it's actually exporting this. Obviously, if you have a much larger file with more pages, it's going to take longer. This is only um, 100 pages, so it should export uh, rather quickly. So here I have my grocery store flyer now. It's a 100-page document. If I kind of scroll through here, you can see it goes from Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, et cetera, et cetera. And if I go over to my bookmarks area here, you can see that a bookmark has been created for each individual uh, box for uh, using our information from our data set. So I have my 100 for Alabama, my 50 for Alaska, everything is here. Now, if I go ahead and I split this document now, um, I can split it successfully between 50 different um, PDFs, but it's just going to create it as grocery store flyer one, grocery store flyer two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what we want to do is we want to split it based on our bookmarks. And the way to do that is to go to our tools to organize pages. And we're going to click split here. And this is normal where you just tell it, you know, I want to split it between two pages and then it would create those 50 documents for you. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to change from number of pages to top level bookmarks. And we need to go to output options here. I'm going to select this to a folder. Otherwise, it's going to dump 50 folders here in my, um, in my uh, uh, folder. So I'm just going to go create a brand new folder and I'll just call this locations. So I'll click choose. And then down here under file name, we want to use the bookmark names for file names. So I'll click OK and then I'll click split. And you can see here it says the document has been successfully split into 50 documents. So if, click OK. And if I just minimize this, and I go back to, I'm going to minimize this, and I go back to my uh, folder here. Here's my locations folder that I just created. And if I go inside here, you can see now I have 50 items, 50 PDFs, and each one of them has the quantity, an underscore, and then the name of that state. And it's even put them all in numerical sequence. So I have my 50s, my 100s, 500s, 1000s, all the way up to 10,000 for my New York location. So now I can go ahead and I can send this off to press. If I uh, click on an individual one here, you can see this is for Alaska. It's only a two page PDF. Here's all my information for my Alaska store. And now my press operator knows that they are only supposed to print 50 for that uh, file. Same thing when they get here, they'll print 100 and then 250, 500, etc. 
So this is much easier, in my opinion, than using a list to go from. Uh, obviously, you can use this tutorial to do many different things as far as your uh, naming conventions for your files. If you have, uh, say, business cards and you need to set those up individually, you can set up uh, the business card names for the uh, file names and, and uh, quantities for those file names as well. So lots of different things you can do with it. I hope I earned a, uh, a like today and a subscribe if you haven't already. Um, please leave a comment down below if you think this is uh, uh, going to be helpful to you. If you have any questions or if you need help with anything pre-press related, I like to do little challenges like this. I like to take on video ideas. So if you have any ideas for a future video, please comment down below. Um, <clears throat> as always, I leave a link down in the description to my Patreon page. If you want to support the channel a little bit further, please check that out. Otherwise, like I said, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.